بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله الأمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to this new episode of Ask Huda coming to you live from Jeddah, Saudi Arabia and we our lines are open to receive your calls as you will see the numbers displayed at the bottom of the screen insha'Allah uh, the first question of today's program is from Amatullah. She says, I live in an Arab country and I'm different like them, being from Europe. I keep my morning and evening adhkar and I want to ask you as I'm invited to an Islamic wedding where uh, there will be only women. Can I read something over me before I go there or should I cover myself even in front of them as I'm afraid of hasad? The sister definitely is referring to the fact that she is from Europe. She is probably blonde and uh, with fair skin. And she's afraid of someone watching over her, someone looking at her and giving her an evil eye. And this happens. However, as a believer, as a Muslim, as long as you maintain and observe the adhkar of the morning and the evening and the adhkar that we say after salat, and the adhkar before going to bed, and also the adhkar when we go out of the house and say Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah, etc., that you all know of. In this case, you should have nothing to fear because you are protected. Allah Azza wa Jal is watching over you, and with the grace of Allah, nothing would happen to you because you have said the adhkar with uh, uh, an open mind and, 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 and a focused heart. So you should not uh, be afraid of that because this is usually from shaitan. Um Umar's question is, why is a sheep for sacrifice better than a camel and a cow? I don't know where Um Umar got this um, notion, this idea from, because the Prophet والسلام, the majority of his time, the majority of his sacrifice were of camels. We know that in Hajjat al Wada, in the farewell pilgrimage, he sacrificed a hundred camels, 100, not a single sheep. So in Udhiyah or in sacrifice of Hadi, you have the choice either to slaughter one sheep or to take part in slaughtering a camel or a cow and having six others with you and you can sacrifice a whole camel on your behalf alone and not sharing it with anyone so saying that a sheep is better than a, a camel or a cow this is not uh, correct Sara uh, says is it mandatory to do wudu before ghusl I didn't do that so do I have to repeat my prayers and wash my clothes that I prayed in for the next salah. However, I did make wudu afterwards. Can you please help me? I'm very worried about my salah. First of all, ghusl has two ways to do. And I'm talking about the ghusl that uplifts a major impurity. I'm not talking about a normal shower or a, norm, a normal bath that a person takes, whether to clean himself or simply to go for a ritual such as Friday or Eid. I'm talking about the ghusl, which is a total mandatory bath that uplifts the major impurity. This has two ways of doing it. One is the sunnah way. And this is when a person is in the state of sexual impurity or a woman is pure and clean from her menses or postnatal bleeding and she would like to uplift the major uh, uh, impurity. The sunnah is to wash your hands three times and then wash your private parts and then wash your hands again. Then perform wudu and 
the whole wudu process is normal but don't wash your feet delay that till the very end after that you take three scoops of water and thoroughly wash your head ensuring that the water has reached the scalp after that you pour water on the right side of your body and then the left side of your body and then wash your feet and by that you've purified yourself and you've uplifted both major and minor impurities so now you can pray the second way of doing it is to simply shower take a shower without performing any wudu but because this is uplifting a major impurity if you turn the water in your mouth and sniff the, no the, the, the water up your nostrils and, and uh, uh, sniff it uh, and then uh, uh, take it out by washing the whole of your body you have also performed ghusl that uplifted your major and minor impurity one would say but I didn't perform wudu we say it is a minor form of worship that went under the bigger form of worship for example if I go to the masjid and the imam is praying dhuhr four rakahs so I join him in the first rakah second third and fourth he concluded I concluded my prayer now do I have to stand up and pray two rakahs tahiyyatul masjid the greeting of the masjid the answer is no one would say why you didn't pray it I said I didn't pray it but the four rakahs which are a major and a bigger form of worship had this embedded in it so there's no need for that likewise a person in Hajj who did not perform Tawaf al Ifada or Tawaf al Hajj or Tawaf al Ziyara, all three names are for the Tawaf, which is a pillar of Islam, uh, uh, that is a pillar of Hajj. A person did not perform it on the day of Eid and decided to perform it on the 13th of the Hijjah. And as he was doing it, he finished it, finished his uh, uh, um, uh, Sa'i and left to the buses and and, and left uh, uh, the place. Do we say you have to slaughter uh, a sheep because you didn't uh, offer farewell tawaf? The answer is no. Farewell tawaf is embedded in this and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. Aisha from Dubai. Farewell tawaf is embedded in this and Allah Aisha from Dubai. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Listen to me from the phone and turn off your yeah. uh, TV. Yes, what can I do for yeah. you? Uh, isn't it telling me about the the man will uh, divorce his wife because the reason is he wants to marry another one? Okay. Any more question? Yeah, that's all. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sister Aisha is asking: Is it permissible for a man to divorce his wife because he wants to marry another one? Divorce can take the five rulings it can be mandatory it can be recommended it can be permissible it can be not recommended it can be forbidden so it depends on the intention if a man divorces his wife because she prays and he tells her not to pray and or she wears the hijab and he doesn't want her to wear the hijab this divorce is forbidden and he's sinful because she's doing something that is mandatory if a man divorces his wife because she goes out without his permission and she has friends of the opposite sex and she goes and parties her divorce is mandatory such an evil woman should be thrown in trash not to be kept in the house and taken care of his children who would probably be like her evil and a piece of trash likewise with the other rulings on divorce so generally speaking if a man divorces his wife because he wants to marry another one, we would like to look into the circumstances that made him divorce his wife. Maybe he says that my divorce is, my, my wife is totally against me taking a second wife and she is not fulfilling my uh, needs as a husband and she is a working woman and she doesn't have time for me and I told her quit your job and blah, blah, blah. He gives circumstances that are acceptable. In this case, then he has nothing wrong on him because she doesn't allow him to either marry another wa wife and she is not able to give him his uh, rights. So his divorce is uh, uh, okay and we have to look into the reasons and Allah knows best. Ridwan from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, uh, 
I want to ask a question regarding council, council prayer. Okay. Supposing I estimate that I will reach my destination. Okay. Before the time of before the time of after prayer, for instance. Okay. Can I still combine vision and after prayer while on the trip? Or can I confine myself to visual prayer only? I don't know that my question is clear. It is clear. You're asking that. I know that I will arrive to my destination when Asr time is due. But on the way, can I combine Asr to Dhuhr? Yes. The answer is yes, exactly. Akhi. The answer is yes. Mm -hmm. You can do that on your way, and there is no problem in it, inshallah. Okay. My second question is, I came across a book called um, Nahajul, sorry, if I pronounce it wrong, Mm. Uh, Nahajul Balaga or something like that. Okay. It is a, it is a collection of the... Ali ibn Abi Talib sayings. Of, of uh, Sayyidina Ali. Yes, yes, I know. I, I don't know how, how, how you read that book. I don't want to go into reading it before being sure okay. about its... Um, how you read it. Thank you. Salaam alaykum. Alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Brother Ridwan. Aisha from Saudi. Assalamualaikum. Salam wa rahmatullah. Uh, Sheikh, I have a question. Yes. Is it permissible to give gifts to teachers who are teaching you? Because uh, I've heard that it is disliked. What is the ruling? What okay. is the ruling on it? Okay, I will answer your question, inshallah. Okay. Uh, Ridwan's second question was about the book known as Nahj al Balagha, which is a, 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 a compilation of uh, the sayings of Ali ibn Abi Talib, may Allah be pleased with him, the fourth Khalif, and the husband of uh, Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet wasallam. And this book, to my knowledge, is not authentic in the sense that it does contain few of the words and the sayings of Ali ibn Abi Talib, and it has a number of fabricated things that are not truly related to him. So is it trustworthy to, to read? And I would advise you not to do that. Yani Allah Azza wa Jal will hold you accountable to the Quran and to the Sunnah. Not to what Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali, may Allah be pleased with them, though they are the elite and the best of the Ummah. Yet you are held accountable to what Allah has said onto the Prophet ﷺ's Sunnah or to their Sunnah because they are the rightly guided uh, caliphs. But they will not bring something that goes against the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So, if you have enough time on your hands, it is best to recite the Qur'an. Nothing comes close to the Qur'an. Recite it. Ponder upon the verses. Understand the meaning. Read the tafsir. And then you also, parallelly, you could study and go through the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, comprehend it, and inshallah, you will uh, uh, benefit more than reading anything else. Uh, Kareem from Germany. Khalil, alaykum salam, rahmatullah, Khalil. MashaAllah, Sheikh, I have a quick question for you. Yes. And basically, I live in Germany, and my mom, my mom is non-Muslim. She's not a Muslim. Mm. And I want to ask if her friends, like, her, like, let's say a family she knows, her good friends, they want to invite us for dinner, right? Mm -hmm. So, can we? Because to me and my brother, you know, we're practicing Alhamdulillah. But then, if we go to the family, they have a daughter, and then they have a son. And then, you know, so it would be like a mixed, well, on one table, you have the, the girl, the young girl, and then the mother, obviously, they're both not covered. And, and it's for that purpose, because they've shown interest to Islam, but then at the same time, I don't want to compromise my Islam, as in, if I'm not allowed to go, as in, because it's not a very, because it's a mixed environment, basically, on the table, you know, okay. the, the, the girl will be there, the young girl, and I my brother. So what do you advise us to do? Can we go and maybe lower our gaze and then still have the dinner with them? Or should we just rather not go at all? I will answer your question, inshallah. Any more questions? Okay. And the second question, mm. can I just get a quick, because like, I just want to know how to practically apply the, the, the um, drinking, the eating, sorry, the eating the meat of the people of the book. Does that mean here, right now, I can go to any restaurant in Germany, sit down, and because, you know, the, 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 the party here, the ruling party calls themselves Christian Socialist Party, so can I accept that and say, okay, so I can go to a restaurant here, I sit down, even mm. though they, they, they cook pork in the back, they, they, they sell alcohol, I don't know if it's going to come into my food. Can I just say, okay, I don't know. It may not be. They may not cook with the same oil they use the pork with. 
you know, all these things you can think of, you know, that maybe they cook with the pork the same food as it's beef. So, just to, you know, because a lot of us in the West, we don't know, can I just go and eat the meat? I will so that. Please, could you just answer that? As in, I will do. And even like the friends my mom wants to invite us to, they call themselves Christians. Can I just go and eat their meat? Okay. Can I just sit there and eat with no problem to say, okay, maybe, you know, the meat is, yani, you know what I mean? As in, it's just... I know, I know exactly. The, the, I know. The ease of I understand. The meat for the people of the book. I understand. I will answer you, inshallah. Abdul Aziz from Nigeria. I think we've lost Abdul Aziz. Okay. Uh, so, Ridwan, we've done with Najil Balagha. Aisha is saying that what's the ruling on giving gifts to teachers who teach you? If these teachers are giving you exams and their opinion would matter whether you pass or not, whether you get an uh, A plus or you get a B or a C or whatever. In this case, this gift of yours, while you're still studying with them, is to be considered as a bribe. And one should not do this. But uh, we have Um Muhammad from Kenya. Um Muhammad. Um Muhammad from Kenya. Um, hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum assalam. Listen to me from the phone and turn down your um, TV. I'd like to ask a question. Yes. Okay, sorry for that. Um, what is the hukum of a husband? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hello? Yeah, um, what Muhammad. is the hukum of a husband okay. who has not provided for his children and then after some time he wants to marry a second wife and then chooses to want to marry a second wife and decides not to go to work in order to provide for the two women. Is, is that allowed? Okay, I will answer your question, inshallah. So, um, Aisha... Uh, if you're studying and your teacher is doing voluntary work, so, for example, if you go to a masjid, to a knowledge circle, and the, the teacher is not charging, and you want to give a gift uh, uh, as a form of appreciation, this is permissible, because there is no benefit for the teacher. Meaning, if I were a teacher in a high school, and one of my students gives me uh, uh, an expensive pen or a watch, now... If I were not teaching him at that school and taking salary for it, if I were in my house or if I were on the streets, he would never have given me this. He's giving me this because of a reason. And usually the reason is that when I correct his uh, paper, uh, I would you know, feel sorry for him and maybe give him an extra mark here or there. And this is not permissible. Uh, Khalil's question from Germany, his mother is... Uh, a, a non-Muslim and they're invited to a friend's house but this family is inclined to Islam yet they have a daughter who is not properly dressed and his fr mother's friend probably is also not properly dressed so he says can we go and give them da'wah and lower a gaze or not attend the answer is no you should not attend because this has negative impact on your deen yourself and this is one of the steps of shaitan because once you begin, then it, things would roll over and over and after that. So you will have uh, them calling you, maybe SMSing you, maybe uh, meeting somewhere else just to clarify your point of view, chatting, Facebook, Twitter, and the sky is the limit. Therefore, no, you should not be there and you should not go there. His second question is, regarding the food of the people of the book. In chapter 5, Surah Al-Ma'idah, Allah tells us that the slaughtering of the people of the book is halal for us. So if we know that this is a Christian country and the people of the book live there, this means that we can eat from their meat. And we don't have to go out of our way and say, is it slaughtered, is it banged on the head? As long as it's a Christian country, it's a Christian family, we eat without asking questions. And this draws us to his third question, that is when our friends or our neighbors invite us to food and we go, do we have to yani, ask questions and, and this or that? 
So by default, the food of the Christian of the uh, of the Christians or the, or the, the people of the book is halal for us. Now, when it comes to restaurants, it's different because we know that this restaurant has a kitchen and they cook on their grill and they fry in their oil, pork, fish, and meat. So this makes the question marks, raises the flags, and you have to refrain from eating in such restaurants because it is haram. The, the, the beef is there, the mutton there is halal, but the way it's cooked, it, you don't know, and most likely it is because it's a restaurant. You see pork is being served, etc. Now, when it comes to the family that invites you, there is no harm in asking them that, and usually the family would cook beef and mutton on different grills. Yeah, and they would use a pan and they would wash the pan and, and then do it, not like in uh, restaurants where they use the whole thing for the same uh, purpose. Therefore, if you ask, there's no problem. And uh, it's best to be safe rather than sorry. The th last point I'd like to make is that in some countries, it is against the law to slaughter. So if you know that you're living in, let's say, Belgium, maybe, I don't know, Holland, if they have legislations, if they have rules and regulations forbidding the animal to be slaughtered, and they say it has to be killed either by banging it on the head or uh, 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 electrifying it or suffocating it until it is dead completely, then we start to cut the head off. This is a dead meat. You cannot eat that and you could not eat meat in any of the restaurants in that country, the Christian country. Unless there is a Muslim shop that sells halal meat and you know he's a Muslim, then this is okay, inshallah. Um, um Muhammad from Kenya, she says, what's the ruling on a husband who does not support his family? He doesn't have money to provide for his wife and children. And now he wants to get another wife. Is this permissible? The answer is no. Te definitely, it's totally prohibited for him to do such a thing because he's not being fair with his first wife and children. If he had access of money and he can be fair in providing for both families, this is permissible. If his second wife is so rich that she is willing and uh, 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 allowing him to take from her money to give his wife and children, this is permissible, but First of all, I don't think there is such another second wife that does this. Secondly, I don't believe that a man allows himself to accept to be treated in such a, a, a way. So uh, I, I recommend highly that uh, he does not do this. And if he doesn't uh, have the means to support them, the marriage is uh, haram for him. Uh, Abdul Karim from uh, Nigeria. Okay, Muhammad from Saudi. Muhammad, Muhammad, listen to me from the phone and turn down your TV uh, set, please. Yes, I already done that. Okay, I'm listening. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Alaikum assalam, Allah. Kif alik? Hayyak Allah khir. Sheikh, I have just three questions. I have quickly ask and I will cut off the phone. Okay. My first question is regarding share market. What is the ruling for share market or stock exchange in Islam? Is it halal or haram? Okay. My, se my second question uh, is about uh, married life. Uh, like after birth of the first child, uh, if, the, if the couples want to give a spacing, mm. is it allowed to use contraceptive devices such as condom or such as things like that? Okay. Uh, Sheikh, my third question is regarding um, Vienna. Uh, I heard from the hadith that uh, in Jannah, the age for all the people is 40. So I was wondering uh, if I want my kids as kids in Jannah. Uh, obviously, they will grow, grow. I mean, after my death, they will grow a, more age. Mm. So how this thing is going to happen in Jannah? If I want my kids as kids, kids not in 40 age. Okay. Uh, okay. That's all, that's all I, I will answer your question, inshallah. Muhammad has three questions, and uh, the first question is a handful. What's the ruling on trading in shares and stock market? Um, this depends. It depends on the activity that the company 
you're buying its shares uh, uh, deals in. So, okay, Abdul Karim from Nigeria. Yeah, I'm from Nigeria. Yes, what I can I do for you, Abdul Karim? Listen to me from the phone and turn down the volume of your TV set, please. Wa alaykum salam My question is this. Okay. Is it lawful? Is it lawful if a Muslim? Is it lawful if a Muslim to feed from a Christian family during their during their their Christian holidays? I cannot understand your question clearly, uh, Abdul Karim. That is my that is my question. Yeah, he turned down the TV I, I set. Come again. I come again. Turn down your TV set. Don't said, don't is, put it on. Is this is this is this local to eat from the Christian family during this Christmas holidays? During, that is my question. Is it allowed for a Muslim to greet the Christian families on Christmas? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, yes, Sheikh. I will answer you, inshallah. Uh, You're welcome. Sir. So, uh, Muhammad's question was about the shares. We have to, first of all, look into the line of work that this company, I'm interested in buying their shares, uh, uh, is in. So, can I buy shares in Citibank? The answer is no, because it is based on riba. Likewise, HSBC, the banks, the major banks uh, worldwide, they deal in riba, in interest. So it's totally prohibited to buy their shares, to work with them, to work for them, to do anything for them. Likewise, here in, in, in the Muslim countries as well. Uh, if the company deals in entertainment, so they make TV programs, they make music, it's all haram. If they deal in tobacco, if they deal in drugs, if they deal in arms and they supply uh, uh, warring fact, uh, factions with, with uh, uh, guns and they feud their uh, they fuel their feuds with uh, uh, such things this is haram if it's a company that deals with agri uh, agriculture or with dairy products or with industrial products pipes uh, cement factories etc this is halal so it's permissible but we have to look into their financing so we have to read their financial uh, uh, statement and uh, uh, and report and see how they're financing, if they're financing all of their activities with 60 or 70 percent of riba, then the whole place is built on riba and financed by riba. We cannot deal in that. If it's all halal product and being financed less than 30 percent, as some scholars made this uh, um, uh, percentage, by halal, less than 30 percent by riba, but the majority is halal then it is permissible for you, for you to buy and sell, providing you don't have uh, uh, what they call hedging and uh, margin uh, purchasing. You don't get financing uh, by a bank three or four times more than the cash you have, and then you are involved in riba. This is, inshallah, all uh, permissible if you avoid the haram stuff. Um, Abdul Karim's question was, what's the ruling on congratulating the non-Muslims with their feasts, whether it's Christmas, New Year's, Thanksgiving, Halloween, Easter. It is all totally prohibited for Muslims to greet them with their feasts and, on, and their festivals or to celebrate with them or to help them. This is all completely prohibited for Muslims to do. Oh, why? Muslims are so aggressive. Muslim, Muslims are hostile. They don't share the love. No, it has nothing to do with that. We have a religion, and we recite every single day in the Fatiha, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim, guide us to the straight path, other than the path of those whom you have uh, 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 cursed or you have been angered with or went astray. So, this is part of a religion. We have a straight path to follow. This doesn't mean we can't be kind to them and, and caring and generous. No, this is part of our religion. Whenever I have a non-Muslim, I would 
definitely be out of my way to be kind, generous, and caring to him. But this doesn't mean that I should go with him to his synagogue or to his church to uh, uh, worship with him, just part of being uh, uh, nice and, and, and whatever. No, we have a religion, and we have to abide by it. So in our religion, it is prohibited for us to congratulate them or to send them a postcard or to uh, give them a gift on their celebration. This is totally prohibited. One would argue and say, okay, in Eid, they always send us a postcard saying, happy Eid for you. Well, the answer is easy. Our Eids are right and correct because they're in accordance to the true religion of Allah Azza wa Jal. Theirs are not, definitely. So when they do, when do, they do something good, then this is uh, good for them, but this does not mean we have to do the same for them in their uh, uh, celebrations, which is totally prohibited. Shaquille from Medina. Or Shab Salaam wa rahmatullah. Uh, I'm Dr. Shabir from Medina. Shabir, how, uh, how are you? Yes, sir. I just have a question. Uh, I usually uh, post uh, articles on Facebook. Uh, the problem is, uh, most of the times, I try to expose the deviant uh, views and deviant culture or deviant things in other religions. Uh, like, uh, for example, for Christianity, uh, since Christmas is in this month, so I have uh, exposed almost all the I mean, doctrines of Christianity and write some original sin uh, to the their or pagan origins of Christmas. Okay. Do you think is this an offensive way of uh, uh, doing dawa or inviting people? Do you think uh, uh, the Christians will 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 just uh, any, uh, they will just uh, not like this way of uh, because I'm exposing the truth because this is what the uh, Christianity is. Okay, I will so, I will answer your question, Shah. Yeah, yeah, thank you, you very much. You're welcome, Dr. Shabir. Uh, Muhammad's second question was on contraceptives. What's the ruling on having a gap between children, two, three years, so that one would catch his breath and the woman is capable of taking care of a child until he's like two or three years of age and then uh, reproducing again? There is no problem, inshallah, as long as it is not harmful for uh, uh, the woman. The third question is that he heard that uh, people in Jannah would be on an age of 40. And... I don't know this. My, to, my knowledge is that they would be all resurrected and will enter Jannah uh, um, at the age of 33. This is what I know, but m I don't know. Maybe there's something else I, I don't know of. So he's saying that if I die, my children will grow up and probably live until they're 60 or 70, and they will be resurrected as 33 years of age as well. So what if I want to enjoy my children in Jannah? Ahi, Rest assured that Allah Azza wa Jal, if He admits you to Jannah, may Allah admit me and you and all our viewers to Jannah. If Allah admits us to Jannah, you will find everything that satisfies your heart. But there will be things that no eye has seen and no ear has heard of and no heart has ever thought of. So rest assured that you will be satisfied. Don't worry about this. Worry about entering Jannah in the first place. Second of all, the Prophet ﷺ told us that a man like you in Jannah, when he did... Okay, Islam from Nigeria. Islam? Assalamu alaikum, sir. Assalamu my uh, question is, is, if a woman is menstruating for like 15 days, mm. a menstrual period, uh, should she at that stage now have her back and uh, start praying? Okay. And is it also permissible at that stage if the menstruation has not uh, finished for the husband to uh, uh, sleep or come to get together with her? I will answer your question, okay. inshallah. Yeah. Alaikum salam. Um Ayman from Jordan? Oh, um Adam. Um Adam from Jordan? Salam alaikum. Salam rahmatullah. Uh, 
I'm just inquiring. Um, I I um, come to Jordan and um, just to study being here. And I've been introduced to a, a, a sect that I'm, I wasn't aware of before called a Madkhali sect. And I'm just wondering what your opinion is on this. I'm new to this, uh, okay. this uh, ideology. And if you can explain it to me, please. Okay. Jazakum. Hayyakum. And uh, Shabir, Dr. Shabir's question was that he posts on his Facebook articles criticizing and highlighting the origin of different religions such as Christianity, the different sects of Christianity, what they say about Christmas, and he's doing this. So he's saying, is this the right thing to do? To me, I would not be so uh, encouraging for such uh, way of doing da'wah. See, I am a Sunni. I'm a Muslim. And if you want to call me to Islam, if you start by saying, Akhi, I don't like the way you put your hands on your chest because the majority of so-and-so put it under the navel and this may, and you start attacking something that I believe in, I would never accept your da'wah. And likewise, even if a person who's not a practicing Christian, if you start to say your beliefs are wrong and you do this and you do that and you're all in hell, he will not listen to you because you're so offensive. So the way that the Quran teaches us is to call them to common ground, to call them to the Tawheed. Om Kalthum from Nigeria. Assalamualaikum. Salam to Allah. Good evening, sir. Good evening to you. What can I do for you, Om Kalthum? My son in Yahud asked me a question and I couldn't answer. Okay. The question was, is it one receive and achieve for everybody or each person is attached to receive and achieve? I didn't understand you. Is it allowed for him to do what? He asked me, receive and achieve the angels that record our good and bad deeds. The angels that record the good and bad deeds, okay? Yes, that is it one for all the world, for mm. everybody in the world, or is individually, I mean one received and one achieved. Okay, I'll answer your question, inshallah. Um, uh, Abdul Rahim, uh, Abdul Rahim from Saudi? Yes, Salaam alaykum, Sheikh. Salaam to Allah. Sheikh, I have two questions. Yes. Uh, one regarding if somebody purchase a house on uh, a loan from the bank on installment basis, mm. is it permissible or not? The bank is Islamic bank? Yeah, from a uh, not Islamic bank, a normal bank. Yeah, a mortgage. Those who charge the interest. So it's mortgage? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, and uh, if, uh, if the the... The house which we buy, we, we, we receive the rent, it is halal or haram. Okay. And question? Okay. Uh, any more questions? Yeah, that, this is the one. Two questions. Khalas. I will answer, inshallah. Okay. So, we go back to Shabir. So, I would highly recommend that you highlight the good things about Islam. Maybe if you would like to make a comparison, it's okay, but don't be offensive. Call people to truth, call people to uh, honesty, call people in the first place to monotheism, to Tawheed, and tell them that this is what even Christianity teaches in the Bible or in the different uh, uh, religious books. Tawheed is everywhere, worshiping only the one creator. No one is associated with him. If you do this and every now and then you use this information that you have collected and gathered throughout the years about Christianity, about different religions, and just put pointers and, and, and a little bit of it, not to offend anyone, but to open their eyes. This is better, inshallah, and this is my own opinion. Allah knows best. Uh, Islam says that if a woman has her menses for 15 days or more, so what's the ruling on that? If it exceeds 15 days, then this is most likely to be her uh, um, uh, what is known as istihada. This is not the normal menses because now it's prolonged for more than half of the month. Usually it comes six, seven, eight, 
10 days. But if it's more than 15, and this is irregular bleeding, then in this case, a woman is ordered to have her ghusl and to pray, and her husband can uh, uh, have uh, intimacy with her because this is irregular bleeding. However, she should distinguish afterwards, and she, if she has a particular time or period of the month that she gets her menses, when this period comes, she should refrain from salah and from uh, uh, having intimacy with her husband and consider this to be her menses. And afterwards, after it ends, she should have her ghusl and resume her life. And Allah knows best. Um Adam from Jordan, she's saying that she heard of a sect called Al-Madkhali. There isn't any such a, a sect as Al-Madkhali. There is a group of Muslims who decided to follow one scholar whose name is uh, uh, Muhammad bin Rabi' al-Madkhali. He's a great scholar. He was uh, thought of highly of previous scholars of Islam and until today. And he has followings. They chose to take the hard line of, not the sheikh, his followers, uh, to ridicule, to look down, to criticize, to call al-jarh wa ta'deel of everyone else who does not follow them. They're not a sect. They follow Aqidat Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah in totality. And no one is uh, 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 fault proof. Everyone has shortcomings. So some would, ex uh, and he may accuse them of being uh, uh, partly murji'ah, but this is not uh, uh, um, fair and objective. See, when shaitan comes between the different groups that all apply Quran and Sunnah, all raise the flag of Salafiyyah and the flag of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. When shaitan comes, then they start to call each other names and labels and look down at each other. And the only one who's happy is shaitan. He's on his couch laughing his head off. So there isn't any sect as such. But there are a group of Muslims who are following the actual true aqidah, the good books. They pray like we pray. They fast like we fast. They know they teach the same uh, uh, books that we teach, but they come on few different issues that are acceptable to have difference of opinion in, and they take a hard stance, and the others take a harder stance, and they start pointing fingers and uh, calling each other names. So what you uh, uh, should know is that, inshallah, they are on the right track. Avoid the bad things they have, such as slandering everyone who does not follow the sheikh. So at the end of the day, you have only five or six to follow, and the rest are all mubtadi'a or ikhwani, are all in hell, are all deviant. If, if someone makes a single mistake, they immediately uh, 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 pull the trigger on him. And he's deviant, he, he's definitely sururi, qutbi. They call them names and they attack them as they do not attack the enemies of Islam. They're so focused on doing that. And this is from shaitan. Now, are they all the same? No, they're not. But those who are keyboard muftis and those who are so uh, into writing articles and they could spend like six, seven hours writing about people and doing things just to tarnish their reputation, nothing all, not, not, not for the sake of Allah. These people you should avoid. But when they start to teach hadith, they start, hadith, aqidah, they start to teach you the deen, avoid them when they speak about individuals. Just follow their teaching in that sense and Allah guide us all to what uh, uh, um, he loves. Um Kalthum asks and says, are those angels writing the good deeds and the bad deeds? One or two? There are two. In the hadith, we uh, uh, are told that the one who writes the bad deeds is ordered to uplift the pen for six hours. So if a person uh, repents and asks Allah for forgiveness, he would not write it down. And if he doesn't, he writes it down. So we know that there are uh, the two angels uh, for every individual. Abdul Rahim's question is that what's the ruling on buying a house, a property from a bank in mortgage? Meaning that I buy a, a property paying in installments for 20 years with interest. And if I'm late and the uh, inflation goes up and down, the amount goes up and down as well. 
And this is riba. This is totally prohibited, and it's a major sin. And the one who does it and the one who takes the money are all cursed, and there's the same level of uh, sin. Now, if somebody, someone has already got into this transaction, we have to look first on the final amount. So if he says, I bought a house, originally it should have been a million, but the bank is charging me two millions over the duration of two years, of 20 years. So now the contract is signed and I've paid like for five or 10 years or whatever. So what's the ruling on that? We say, if the total amount, which is two million is fixed, no way it will be one penny more due to any reason. In this case, khalas, you've already indulged in this transaction, continue uh, paying them on time until the 20 years are over. But if he says no, it can be 2.4, depending on the inflation and uh, the central bank uh, interest rates, etc. So it, there is a possibility that it may, may increase. In this case, no. We tell you, get out of this deal immediately because the riba is reoccurring and you are part partaking uh, in uh, it a great role. As for the property that I've purchased through this haram transaction, and now I'm putting it on lease, I'm, I'm renting it to people, the income is halal. But you have to try to get rid of that as soon as possible. Um, okay. Wahab or Wahab says, about the day on Tuesdays, I have read that the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam would not go to the market because it's Tuesday. There is nothing on this regard. This is baseless. There are no restrictions for you to go to the market, whether it's Tuesday, Wednesday, or uh, Friday. You can go whenever you want, and there is no hadith in such uh, uh, issue. Tazin uh, has a question. And Tazin says, I got braces two years ago to get my teeth straight and aligned. Now that I took it off, I feel different. I feel like I looked better and felt more confident before I ever got it. Was it sinful for me to get it? I look a little different, so would this mean I'm changing Allah's uh, creation? First of all, to wear these bracelets and uh, braces and to fix your teeth, this is haram. It is not permissible because this is changing the creation of Allah Azza wa Jal. You are after beautifying, more beautifying your teeth. But if the dentist, and he is reliable and he fears Allah, said that your bite is wrong and this will have uh, an impact on your teeth, on the way you eat, uh, or on the way you speak. So this is something that has to be changed into the normal thing. And with the braces, is okay. It's permissible because it is changing a defect. It is changing something that is wrong. But simply just to beautify your teeth and to look better by uh, doing that, this is haram and you must not do that. Uh, Ma'moon says, what is your opinion on the Zahiri Madhab? A Zahiri Madhab is a school of thought that came after the four schools of thought were established. Uh, Dawood ibn Ali Zahi was the founder and Abu Muhammad ibn Hazm was one of the great scholars of that madhab who helped in spreading it. His well-known book Al-Muhalla is, is quite famous in discussing the ch different chapters of fiqh. Al-Zahiri madhab like it sounds. Al-Zahir which means the surface or the blunt uh, meaning. So these people come to a hadith and they take it for its fa face value. And they would not apply any type of analogy to it. And they do not accept analogy comparing apple to apple and getting the same ver verdict. This is not allowed for them to do. Now, in Islam, there is a lot of right in it. But it's not all right. 
So there is analogy. The Prophet والسلام, was once asked about uh, uh, my uh, mother had, uh, did not perform Hajj and she died. Shall I perform Hajj on her behalf? Look at the answer of the Prophet والسلام. He said that if your mother had a debt, would you pay that debt for her? And the man said, yes. So the Prophet said, Allah's debt is more worthy of being paid, which means that he made the analogy. So analogy is part of Islam. Zahiri madhab, they are stiff. They say, no, this is the hadith, we follow it. And we don't care about what are uh, the consequences and, and the, what, what the consequences are and what follows. So for example, the Prophet said, do not urinate in stagnant water and then uh, make wudu after that. So they said, yes, urinating in stagnant water is haram. But if you urinate in a big bucket of uh, uh, an empty bucket and fill it with urine and then pour it in the stagnant water, this is okay. Now this is, with all due respect, stupid. Because this is far worse than urinating five or six drops. But they said, no. And if you take a crap, if you defecate in that stagnant water, it's okay. Because the Prophet only forbade us from urinating. Such things are so uh, 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 ir ir not realistic. And we cannot, fo we cannot follow this and it is not uh, uh, correct. However, they are better than those who do not follow the hadith or the Quran at all and decide to uh, simply follow their whims and desires. And if their whims and desires go against an authentic hadith, they say, no, 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 what we thought of, this is much more reliable than the hadith. So in a sense, yes, you have to uh, uh, balance, you have to set the compromise and their, uh, their uh, school of thought is uh, reliable, but not in every thing. They are more reliable than those who only follow their whims and desires. I'm afraid that this brings us to the end of tonight's program. Until we meet you next time, fi amanillah, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah is my heart's speech. Your mercy is what I beseech. Keep in my heart your remembrance and in your deen alone.